The human brain is one of the most complex objects in the known universe. Can its abilities really be measured with a so-called IQ test? Hey everyone, Lacey Green here. Welcome back to DNews. Last week I was talking about personality tests. This week I'm talking about IQ tests. Look guys, I'm just on this psychological test kick, so don't judge me. IQ tests are interesting to me because for over a century, some people have asserted that certain populations of people, like women, men, poor people, rich people, black people, white people, that they're better than others because they're more intelligent as a group, and that intelligence can be summed up in a single number, their intelligence quotient, or IQ. So let's back up a sec. The IQ test is not your average test. You can't study for it because it's supposed to measure things like how well you can reason or how well you can find relationships between seemingly unrelated things. The average score is 100. Lower than 70 indicates developmental delays, and above 130 indicates exceptional intelligence. But I really wonder about the whole quantifying intelligence thing. I mean, who's deciding what it means to be intelligent in the first place? And also, how on earth could we put a number on something that seems so big and abstract for science and for lulz. I took Mensa's IQ test. They measured my smartness by asking things like, if you count to 100, how many sevens will you pass along the way? I got a 143 on the test, so FYI, I'm pretty much a genius. Except, not really. A Canadian study published in the journal Neuron examined over 100,000 people from across the world and found that the almighty IQ test is fundamentally flawed. The researchers suggest that these types of questions grossly oversimplify the abilities of the human brain. They analyzed the results of 46,000 people, had them take 12 additional cognitive tests, and ran MRI scans. They identified at least three components of intelligence, short-term memory, reasoning skills, and verbal ability, none of which were accurately assessed by the IQ test. Most people don't succeed at all three components and each was affected by simple things like smoking, which reduced short-term memory, or gaming, which enhanced short-term memory. There were also gaping holes in the IQ test in terms of measuring creative intelligence, emotional and social intelligence, specific skills and specialized knowledge, other things that maybe should be considered. What the IQ test did measure was how well Westerners might do in Western schools. Not surprising, the IQ test was created in 1939 based on what was being taught in schools. Which begs another interesting question, I think. Do schools actually make people smarter? Hot damn, I am not opening that can of worms. So the researchers want us really to enrich the ways we conceive of intelligence by creating more measures for all the various types of intelligence out there. They want to change the way we think about being smart, both in the institutions that are using the IQ test to measure intelligence and on a personal level, so that our understanding is more well-rounded, it's relevant to the context, and it doesn't reduce all of this guy's abilities to a number. Let me know your thoughts about IQs and smartness down below, and don't forget to subscribe so we can bring you more science updates. I'll see you later, folks. <laughs>